Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are beginning our discussion on flatworms and roundworms. If you look at page 255 in your textbook, we begin our discussion of flatworms and roundworms. Uh, here we have a nice diagram of a planarian. This is a flatworm over here on the left. Uh, on the right, we are looking at uh, flatworms and roundworms. Let's scoot this over so we can uh, get the whole thing here. Introduction to these guys, uh, they have long, soft, they're long, soft-bodied organisms. Uh, they really range in length, depending on which species we are looking at, anything from a fraction of an inch uh, all the way up to uh, several inches long. Uh, they do exhibit bilateral symmetry. This is the first time we've seen this word, bilateral. Uh, the key here is by two and then lateral meaning lengthwise. So in other words, if we cut this guy right down the middle, uh, if we straighten him out and cut him right down the middle, we're going to have equal sides on the left and the right. They're the shapes are going to look the same left to right, and so they have bilateral symmetry, two equal sides. Uh, we're looking now at the planarian. Planarium is in phylum platahelminthes. Platahelminthes is the way we say this. Uh, these are flatworms. Most of them are free living, meaning that uh, they are found that they can uh, exist on their own. They're going to find their own food. Uh, they are free living, but some of them are parasites, meaning that they are going to live off of you. Uh, found in water around the world, both fresh water and salt water. Some of them are found in uh, soil. Well, we're going to look at the nervous system, and the picture we have here of this planarian is uh, its nervous system. The planarian does not have a really have a brain. Uh, they have a ganglia, which is a control center. It's not really a full brain. They don't really process thoughts. Basically, what happens is these nerves that run through the body, they are going to detect. Uh, uh, they are going to to detect different signals. And they're going to send the signals up to the ganglia, and the ganglia basically says move away or move towards. They do have the eye spots. Um, the eye spots are not really eyes, but rather more like a light sensor uh, than it is an eye. So the longitudinal nerves going lengthwise, longitude, the transverse nerves going across the body, uh, they will respond to this stimuli, and if you look over... Uh, oh, towards page number 256 of your book, almost all the way down, we see that they do have the ability to distinguish between different kinds of touch. They can detect specific chemicals. They avoid light. Uh, all of these sensory uh, things, they will uh, uh, go swim towards a current. Uh, they'll swim upstream normally, if, they, if, if at all possible. Uh, these things that the nervous system is picking up on. The digestive system, we're going to look at this a little bit more uh, in videos that we watch in class. But the digestive system, they do have a mouth that's on the underside of the worm. And uh, that mouth sends this little pharynx, it's this little tube, and it sticks it outside of its body, and it sucks food up into the mouth. So the mouth is not really a hole that it shoves food into, but really it's a hole through which the pharynx sticks out and once it uh, sticks out, it can suck food up then into its intestine. The intestine is really a uh, long cavity, and it doesn't have muscles like your stomach. It's not like our stomach that is going to be pushing and twisting and, and uh, causing food to be digested. Rather, uh, as the planarian moves back and forth and kind of wiggles his way around, he is going to be able to digest that food. Uh, so the intestine is just one long cavity. Um, other systems that's uh, worth pointing out about the planarian in phylum platahelminthes, uh, other things worth pointing out is that they do have muscles to help them be able to move. They have these excretory pores. We see it here. They've got these little flame cells uh, through which uh, the, they, they are able to excrete their waste. Uh, reproduction. Reproduction. Now, these guys are really pretty uh, unique here. Uh, in their reproduction because they are hermaphrodites, meaning that one single organism, one single planarian, is going to be able to produce both male and female gametes. Uh, 
kind of unique in that way. Uh, very few other organisms are hermaphrodites, but the planarian is. But really their claim to fame and what most people know the planarian for is regeneration. When they split, they'll form two new species. And uh, you can cut them, I believe it's up to 290 something times, uh, and they will form 290 something new planarians. Uh, they've even done some testing and said that th they've decided or determined that when a planarian is cut, you can cut its head off, you can cut off its ganglion, it'll form two brand new planarians, and both of them will remember what the original planarian had learned. And uh, so they've, they've done some testing there and said, boy, if you can cut its head off and the one that grows the new head will still remember what the old one knew. Uh, kind of interesting. Next, we have the Ascarius. Now, the Ascarius is in Phyla, Phylum Nematoda, and these guys are really, pretty, are really some pretty scary organisms because these are going to be roundworms, and these roundworms uh, are parasites, and they will feed off of whatever host they are in. Uh, these typically will go, if they get into a human, they will go into the stomach where they can remain undetected, uh, cases up where they have remained undetected for up to 40 years. But they will uh, multiply and they will eat the food that you are eating. Uh, they will even eat you. They will begin to move up into the body and they will go through your blood system, break out of your blood system, and uh, uh, move into the lungs, typically. From the lungs, they will, uh, uh, in some cases even, uh, if your body gets a temperature, they will run away, they will crawl away from the heat of your body's fever and crawl back up into your airway, and uh, people have begun to cough these roundworms out. Uh, sometimes these parasites, the Ascaris, this roundworm, will go up into the brain and begin to eat the brain, uh, and uh, uh, these guys can cause death a number of different ways, whether it be from eating your brain, whether it be from starving you out by eating your food, whether it be from causing a blockage in your airways or in your, in your intestinal system. The roundworm is a very dangerous uh, parasite for us to contract. Uh, they have they they live in uh, or will live in be parasites of several different types of animals and we'll talk about that a little bit more in class. Let's make sure that we uh, understand what we've been talking about: the flatworms and roundworms. The flatworms, primarily planarians, they exhibit uh, all of these are going to exhibit bilateral symmetry. Uh, the planarian does have a nervous system. It uses a ganglion kind of as its control center or response center. Uh, the Ascarius is a roundworm and it is a parasite. Enjoy your evening.